Thank you for joining us. Great big hello to each and every one. Very grateful and thankful that you've chosen to spend this time with us. 3 ABN Family Worship. God bless each and every one of you. Get your Bible, pencil, and paper. And, uh, you know, take, take some notes on some things. If you're like I am, I need to jot them down. I, I think I can remember them at different times. You know, I, I'll remember that. But, you know, I need to jot it down. So maybe you're the same way. So jot it down. We're going to be talking about a one day's neglect. Mm -hmm. And again, what is, what is all that referring to? We're going to talk about Bible study and prayer, witnessing, and again, the accountability of our time. You know, I think about that every day of my life, and I'm sure that each one of you do too, that, you know, we're, we're accountable to God for really for mm -hmm. every, every minute of our time, Amen. whether it be good or bad. And uh, sometimes we see things or sometimes we find ourselves wasting time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, time is very, very short. I, we believe Jesus is coming. Well, so we're glad you joined us here today Amen. at 3 in Family Worship. And we're going to study, again, one day's neglect. And I believe that God has given each one who is here, my dear precious wife, I'm glad you're with us today. Thank, Thank you. you. I know you're going to help pull us out of when we need extra oh, help. Oh, I don't know about us. that, yeah. by the grace of God. Now, well, <laughs> one day's neglect. Yes. That can go in so many different areas, but you know, God's given us some, some good folks here. Maybe you want to introduce everybody before we have prayer. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, yeah, and then get started because uh, I'm interested in what everybody has to say and what the Holy Spirit has impressed each one, you know, in their heart and their life and what they've jotted down. Uh -huh. We can always learn mm -hmm. from others. Well, to my left yes. is Eddie and Linda Clark. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have heard them on the radio. In fact, before you moved here, I was kept mentioning your name at church and they're like, hey, aren't they the ones on the radio? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and somebody was at our church not long ago. And, and finally, after mentioning your name several times, they said, I remember listening to them. So a lot of people know your voices yeah. and we're so thankful that you are here with us. Thank Tell you. us Thank a little you. bit about what you do, Sister Linda. Mm -hmm. Well, as many of you already know, we've moved here to Illinois mm -hmm. and we're running a treatment center. We're, we have parts of it that are already open and some of it's yeah. still not ready yet, but we've made massive changes in the last yeah. year. We have been here now almost a year in October. Wow. And uh, my husband and I were looking back on the last year and thinking about how much we did got done. We do not want to live that last year over again. <laughs> <laughs> but, but we are so glad to be here and we have run into so many blessings. With every challenge, yes. the Lord has ex, uh, extended so much graciousness mm -hmm. to us mm -hmm. and, wow. and we're filled with so much awe at how wonderful He is. In spite of our imperfections, He's mm -hmm. covered us. Amen. Amen. It's been a wonderful blessing being here and getting to know and uh, make new friends. Amen. And uh, God is just incredible. Mm -hmm. It's almost like you guys have always been here. Yeah. We love having you here. Well, thank, thank you. That. We appreciate right. it. You're not sick of us yet? No, not yet. No, no, no. <laughs> and to our right, we're not sick of you either. We love you both too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You guys are so precious. Yeah. You work here at 3ABN, Marilyn, and then Eric. Why don't you, Eric Durant and Marilyn Durant, let me give your last name. So Marilyn, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do? Um, I'm the manager over at the call center, and we take all the orders, donations, ship out orders, um, you name it, we do it. So, yeah. do a lot of investigating, so mm -hmm. it's a good time over there. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's a blessing to be here Absolutely. at the ministry and yes. serving the yes. Lord. Always, yeah. always. Yeah. And such good, wonderful, positive attitudes. I think every time I've mm -hmm. met you, I remember when you first took over, just you've been sweet, sweet, sweet yeah. for years. <laughs> just yeah. always love Thank working you. with you. Thank you. That's why I married her. That's why you married her. <laughs> you you <laughs> chose right. very well, Brother yeah. Eric. <laughs> very well. Mm -hmm. So, Eric, what do you do here at 3ABN? Um, in engineering, mm -hmm. I mend broken equipment. <laughs> <laughs> I like God. that. Yes. I write software and mm -hmm. uh, we do whatever it takes to keep us on the air. Yeah. Whether we, it comes electrical or uh, even sometimes non-electrical. Yes. Uh, whatever it takes to keep the message going out. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's why it's so important. No matter what we say, what we do, how we study, what we're trying to share with people, if we can't get it out to you, mm. It doesn't mean anything, right? Yeah, right. It's all right. about you at home and, yeah. and what we're sharing, what the Lord inspires us to share with you at home. That's right. Amen. Praise so. the Lord. Wow. Looking forward to the study again. And, and you know, I'm excited about one day's neglect. And I, if I've been neglecting, I want to change it, right? I want to Amen. be able to Amen. see. We, we can't afford to neglect <laughs> this subject. And so we're going to have prayer right now. I'm going to ask Brother Ed if he'll give a, a prayer, opening prayer for us, please. You bet. Let's bow our heads. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that uh, you've set aside these 
uh, precious hours coming into your Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you for setting them aside for us to draw closer to you, Amen. to have this special time. And, and Lord, you wouldn't have set apart a special day if it wasn't for you using it mm -hmm. to do a special work. Amen. We pray that you will touch our hearts and minds and the viewers and listeners touch their hearts and minds as well. May each and every one of us be richly blessed by this yes. study. Mm -hmm. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. You know, we're starting out here. There was a, in some of our notes that we have one, one day's neglect. And we start out uh, reading some passages of scripture and there's some things in there. And I, and I want you to, to read those if you will, because it, when I was growing up and you, as you read this here, uh, was in Ecclesiastes, they talk about a, a time to, to be born, a time to, you know, to plant, a time to, to, to kill. And, and I always wondered about all that stuff. So there's, there's a time for everything. Mm -hmm. Now mm -hmm. we need to figure out what maybe that everything might be. So mm -hmm. let's just go through that again. Maybe you have questions or maybe somebody will want to when you get done reading those, those to have a, maybe a thought. And on. I know when Brother Eddie was praying, I yeah. thought that's a time one day in seven, the Sabbath day, the right yes. day that we yeah. do not want to neglect, that's right? right. Yes. Amen. For the most part, many of us never consider the importance of our time. Mm -hmm. We fail to realize that each precious day is a precious gift Amen. from God. Yes. Ecclesiastes chapter three, three gives us some insight into the importance of time. To everything there is a season and to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, mm -hmm. a time to plan and a time to pluck up that which is planted, well. a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, mm -hmm. a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get and a time to lose, mm. a time to keep and a time to cast away, oh. a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to keep silence. Yeah. That's something we can all oh, learn mercy. about too. And a, <laughs> and a time to speak, mm -hmm. a time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. Perhaps Ecclesiastes 3.17 summarizes the best, the best, the importance of our times where it reads. Oh, okay. Let me read that again. Perhaps Ecclesiastes 3.17 summarizes best the importance yes. of our time where it reads in, chapter, in verse 17. God shall judge. Wow. And this is something I think a lot of people, something I think is so important that we come to the realization of is that, co that God will judge the righteous and the wicked mm. for there is a time there for every person purpose and for every work. The righteous and the wicked will be judged mm. by the use of our time. That's right. Mm. By yeah. the use of our time. And our message today, once again, it is entitled One Day's Neglect. Yes. Basically, we are looking at the daily use of our time and how easy it seems to neglect what is in reality now and for eternity, the most important part of our day, yeah. our time that we spend yes. with God. Amen. We also want to discuss the result of one day's neglect. Mm. If not spending time with Christ, uh, one day's neglect if we, re, if we fail to spend that time yeah. with Christ is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. Joseph and Mary found this out yeah. when Christ was only seven years of age. 12. They had, ta or excuse me, 12 years of age. Mm -hmm. They had taken him to Jerusalem for the Passover and we can read this in Luke chapter two. Yes. The Passover feast was a very busy time. It was the most largely attended of all three of the annual feasts. From every part of Palestine, the worshipers came in great numbers, mm -hmm. traveling for several days to get there for the and to return back to their home. So it took them a while to get there. It was a long, they didn't have the cars, the vehicles, you know, probably a lot of them didn't have their donkeys, mm -hmm. you know. The Passover was then followed by seven days of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. It was during this time that Christ, at the young age of 12, began to understand much more clearly his work of redemption. Mm -hmm. 
Every act he witnessed, the sacrifice of the Passover lamb, etc., all became bound up in his mind yes. to what his own life, his own purpose was. Right. Jesus desired to speak with the learned men, the rabbi teachers of the law and the prophets. He questioned them as one thirsting for truth in regard to the prophecies and the events that pointed to the advent of the Messiah. It was here with the rabbi that Jesus tarried as his parents had left Jerusalem with their myriads of friends and acquaintances. And they had assumed this whole time that Jesus was a part of the group. They just hadn't mm -hmm. seen him. Joseph and Mary were caught up in travel and the excitement of the day. But by one day's neglect, Listen to this. Uh -oh. By one day's neglect, they had lost the Savior. Yes. It cost them three days mm. of anxiety, three days of anxious search to find him. So with us, by idle talk, evil speaking, or neglect of prayer, mm. and may I add neglect of worship, well. each morning and maybe mm. each evening, we may in one day, yeah. lose the Savior's presence. And it may take many days of sorrow. Yes. Remember, when they were searching, I, I can picture yeah. her just weeping and grieving, thinking, we've lost this child. Mm. This is the child that, that Herod had tried to murder, and mm. we've lost him. And so it happens with us. It may take us a while to find him and to regain. You know, when I reread this again, to regain mm. the peace that we lost, it brought tears to my eyes because it's such a sobering thought. Mm -hmm. And I think we take it for granted many times when the Holy Spirit is with us and we are in mm -hmm. His presence and we have that peace, we think, well, nothing can separate, but we have a choice. Absolutely. We have a choice. God will allow nothing to separate as long as we choose to stay connected that's to right. Him. Oh, that, that's, that's, to me, is an excellent, excellent foundation which we want to build on as we go because that was just... Can I say sobering? Such mm -hmm. a sobering thought to think. If it's actually, you know, just a, a second, maybe just a decision that was made, mm -hmm. and, and we do that every, maybe every morning, or maybe every evening, or somewhere. We, it's a split second. Second, we would just say, well, "I'm going to study. I'm not going to study. I need to go here first. I need to do this, whatever it might be." And we can actually lose the Savior, and our relationship with Him is, is is weakened for the day. That's right. And He can't do what He wants to do, maybe through us. You know, how do you guys see that? You know, we just start. Yeah, one of one of the things that I thought of whenever I was reading through and studying this, uh, there's a teaching: uh, once saved, always saved. Okay. And while those who promote once saved, always saved, they're not going to tell you that. Uh, they're not going to tell you not to study. They're not going to tell you the importance. Mm. Uh, obedience. Of the, well, not only the obedience. They're not going to tell you that, you know, you can just be saved and then live your life accordingly. They're going to promote staying close to the Lord. But in a way, it, it does promote that as well. Because if you step away from the Lord like, like uh, Joseph and Mary, they lost the Lord for one day. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure each and every one of us, we've been close to the Lord, something has happened yes. uh, that has interrupted our lives in a way to where when we recover from whatever we went through, we're thinking, oh wow, the Lord and I, we're not as close as we used to be. I need to get back into. And so, you know, a lot of people would admit that they've been there, but they wouldn't admit that there's actually a teaching that promotes that a little bit. And so that's one of the things that I was thinking about whenever I was studying was, just the importance of yes. not letting something get us distracted mm -hmm. from, so from words, those moments. Yes. So in other words, you're saying that we need the Savior to uh, be obedient. We need that continual walk with the Lord. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's where you were going with that. And partly, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's, yeah. It's funny, Chris, when you were reading that, what came to my mind was the Lord's Prayer, where He said, oh. give us this day our, our daily, daily bread. bread. Amen. Amen. He, didn't, he didn't say our weekly bread. <laughs> no, sir. Or our monthly bread. That's right. He said, when you wake up in the morning, you should be hungry. Yes. Amen. This is the first bread that you should consume. Wow. Amen. Amen. And a lot of us forget that because we wake up and we, we got to get the kids ready for school and we got to get ready for work and we just get consumed with the world and we forget to eat that bread, which is the most important bread. Well, Amen. you're going right into question number one. It says, how may we lose one day with our yeah. Savior? And is losing a day with Christ worth, mm. worth it considering 
all that we stand to lose. So, and another thing I want to add to that before we get into what you just said, we get busy, is when you said just for a moment, I, I immediately thought of Zechariah. Mm -hmm. Because when the angel came, you know, he was in there ministering mm -hmm. before the Lord, and angel Gabriel came to him and said that even in their old age, that they were going to have a son. Mm -hmm. And he was, he was to be the forerunner of Christ. Mm -hmm. This was Elizabeth and Zechariah, and he was Christ's cousin. And, uh, you know, just for a second, just for a second, he doubted. He began to think, oh, we're so old. He knew Abraham had done it, Abraham and Sarah, but he just thought for a second. And because of that doubt for just a second and probably mm. in his position as priest, Angel Gabriel said, because you disbelieved, wow. you're not going to be able to speak mm -hmm. until the time is over. Mm -hmm. That's right. I mean, we don't realize the ramifications of what we're actually losing mm -hmm. and why we're losing it. And you mentioned sometimes we get busy. Mm -hmm. I put yeah. things here like, well, we may wake up too tired mm -hmm. or <laughs> we may be feeling sick and think I just can't concentrate mm -hmm. or we get up too late. Mm -hmm. You know, we got to mm -hmm. have to hurry for, for work because we always have that pressure over us or not taking time to study and pray just general or entertainment. Oh. Entertainment comes in so many forms and it can, can take over. I even looked at that word entertainment when I put that down here because we have TV, we have internet, we have yeah. music. Entertainment. Remember something is entering okay. in to obtain you. It's holding you okay. captive. Mm -hmm. So we, we don't want that to hold us. I love learning because we are in I think maybe a, a time where we can just have an overload of things right. that we can learn right. right now. It's not always going to be that way, but I like to listen, whether it's a Bible or a sermon or somebody talking about something, even while I'm doing things in the house. So, but we can't allow that to take control. Mm -hmm. And one thing that pastor and I had said years ago is we made a commitment that we will not eat the physical mm -hmm. food until we partake of the spiritual. Amen. Now, I'm not going to say we've mm. always been perfect with that, but we strive. And if it seems like there's not enough time, we're, we're just doing something small because I, I love Amen. spending time with the Lord. Amen. And yeah. I often said that that's when my life really, really changed right. is when I dedicated time to Him before anything else, right. before anything else. Mm. And when I was teaching in the school, I'd tell the kids, don't even get out of bed till you pray. Right. Because it's always something, hey, Johnny, have you had this? Oh, hey, come do this. You know, just pray before you even get up. And then, you know, get up, get a drink, whatever, but sit and have your worship mm -hmm. first. And um, you'll well, find... I, I appreciate you saying that, Chris, about um, before taking, eating a meal or anything, you're going to study the Word. And that stuck in the back of my mind. Mm -hmm. And now I find myself contemplating on those things, like what am I doing? Am I spending time with Christ? Especially lately, you know, I feel like in the mornings, I need mm. to pray, I need to read, even if it's just a verse, you mm -hmm. know, spend time with Christ, start your day out in a positive light. And yeah. that can resonate through the rest of the day. And I'm so grateful here at the ministry that we are allowed to do morning worship. Amen. 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 And share God's word with one another mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. pray. You know, not everyone is blessed to be able to do that no. on right. their job. Wow. So um, I appreciate those words. Amen. I, always, I always think about it comes down, and I'm far from perfect, mm -hmm. but it comes down to what you love because mm. I'm going to make an admission here. Well, now. When I wake up in the morning, the first thing I reach for is my phone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I got to check my emails, and I got to check if I have any messages that night. And I have to ask myself, what do I love more? Why am I not reaching for my Bible first? Mm -hmm. And then see who's called me mm -hmm. over the night and things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. So we have to challenge ourselves and say, isn't the first thing you want to see in the morning your spouse? Or I remember I grew up Baptist. Mm -hmm and we had a Christmas. The first thing on Christmas I wanted to do was run to my toys, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. The first thing you, you gravitate to is that which you love, mm -hmm. and it should be the Bible. It should be the Word, and if it's not, we need to check ourselves. Mm -hmm. I check myself. Mm -hmm. sure. 
and, yeah. and, and so I'm working on that. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Because yeah. yeah. we, 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 we have to see it, don't we? We mm -hmm. have to see if maybe mm -hmm. we're falling a little bit short That's in right. any area before we're willing to maybe make a, a, a change. That's right. And something that w was mentioned there to me was just, we talk about one day's neglect, one second neglect. And then, like I say, it takes, it takes so much time to make up. Is that possible to, right. you have to make up. In other words, you, just a second, uh, in other words, one, one day you just don't have, you don't have worship. You just don't have it. Mm. But it seems like it takes several different days in a row to make up the difference because you've, you've drifted. What if somebody goes a week or two weeks or a month or just every week at church or whatever? Well, what happens if you don't get that opportunity to make it up? Mm. No day or hour is mm -hmm. promised to mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. But, mm -hmm. you, but you lose this like exercise, yeah. isn't it? That's you know, right. You can exercise and all in two or three days, you can lose what it's taken you two or three months to, mm -hmm. to, to, to build up. But notice, I think in that, this lesson, it, it really brings out that there has to, uh, you have to make up. So, and how, how does the person do that? How do we make up? Or redeem the time. Redeem the time. Good, okay. That's right. That's, that's his and my philosophy. How many hours have we wasted in our lifetime? No. Many hours, and we still continue to do that because uh, Eric mentioned the phone. Mm -hmm. uh, how many times can I, standing in one spot, how many minutes can I waste? Um, because it's hard to change gears than to, mm -hmm. to think on a spiritual nature. And so I have wasted many times that I, I have to discipline myself to, yes. to stay away from the pulling of the world. I think time is this incredible treasure. And Amen. how we spend it means we have either given our, nothing is neutral. Everything yeah. we do is either for good or for evil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it's very important that the majority of our day is given to good and, and not to, neutral is Satan's too. Mm -hmm. Satan uh, loves the neutral ground, mm -hmm. um, but the Lord he needs our time. He needs mm -hmm. our time. We need our time with yes. Him. Wow. But I have a quote here from the Spirit of Prophecy. Mm -hmm. But unless the members of God's church today have a living connection with the source of all spiritual growth, they will not be ready for the time of reaping. Amen. Unless they keep their lambs trimmed and burned, they will fail of receiving added grace in times of special need. Mm -hmm. Those only who are constantly receiving fresh supplies of grace will have power proportionate to their daily need and their ability to use that power. Amen. It is vitally wow. important. Yeah. It is. Absolutely vitally important. Yeah. We don't realize how important. He yeah. said, what if a person yeah. goes two or three weeks? I've often said on, on oh, the wow. station, if I go three days, because I've done that before in the past, three days, all of a sudden I'm hearing old songs. Well, now. You know, because you want God to come in to take this mind. Well, Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. He is to take our mind, our thoughts, our dreams to control. We mm -hmm. want him in there. But when we're pushing him out, yeah. all, of these, all of a sudden these old synopsis, these old firings of our neurons start coming back. And we don't mm -hmm. want those. Yeah. I don't want those. Mm -hmm. You no, know. We, we don't need three days. We just need an hour. Give us an hour, <laughs> we'll destroy our whole day. There you, know, you go. I was mentioning, well, and let's talk about, I think I was talking about making up. I kept saying making up. You know, we, we, we lose a little time and so we have to try to make it up. I, I'm wondering, can we really ever make up what we've lost mm. no, for that, really. that moment, that time? Specifically, maybe something God had in store for us, something we need well, specifically. Well, look at the Apostle Paul. Remember? Maybe they've lost it. Uh, you think about the Apostle Paul. I'm sorry, honey, I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, yeah. I can tell he's trying to say something. <laughs> but the Apostle Paul, look at how many years he spent. He even was involved in the stoning of Stephen. Mm -hmm. How many years did he lose in crucifying God's people? Mm -hmm. yes. But the Lord helped him make up for it. Amen. Uh, only Amen. the Spirit of, of God can do that. He said, I die daily. Yes. So he knew he had to have a daily relationship and the, the daily time with God mm -hmm. just to surrender that part mm -hmm. of him that will grow mm -hmm. if you don't surrender it every day. Yeah, I, I was just going to mention Ellen White has a statement where she says that a lot of people who come into the truth just before Jesus comes, mm. they're going to have to have an experience and they're going to have to learn things in a lot shorter time yes. span than the rest of us who have had a lot of time to study and learn. Mm -hmm. and, and so we can redeem the time. The Lord will help us redeem, redeem the time. Mm -hmm. But uh, why put ourselves through the headache? Right. 
yeah. if we don't need to. But we may have lost for that one mm -hmm. day something, at least I feel in my own life, that I needed as a witness. Yeah, Amen. I was just, yeah. We, we, How many we times might have you read that, you know, and you went out in the next day and you talked to somebody yeah. that day? Thank you, Lord. That's exactly what I needed to study, and there's the mm -hmm. answer. That's yeah. right. Might, that's have, right. Might, might have missed a witnessing yeah. opportunity. Yeah. 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 Well, and that's what's so important. You know, it's important to go to church when the church doors are open, that we are there. Corporate time is important. Jesus said, don't forsake ourselves, the assembling together. However, during that personal time is when that Holy Spirit really comes and begins to speak to our mm -hmm. heart. I, I Maybe it's called heart surgery, as it were, mm -hmm. because he begins to mold and change and point us out things that maybe we don't always get when we're in a big group. And we were talking about the importance of it. And who is our example? Mm -hmm. Christ. Jesus. Christ. So I found this quote found in the book of education. It's on page 185. And it's about Jesus. Mm. And it's his example. And I think it should speak to each and every one of us. In childhood, youth, and manhood, Jesus studied the scriptures. Yes. As Pastor said, some people can read something once and they remember it. I would love to remember <laughs> something just one time through. But I have to go back. It's, it, it's interesting as you study the Word of God, you see that how God repeats things. I'm having to repeat. And, um, right. But anyway, he studied the scriptures. And as a little child, he was daily at his mother's knee, mm. taught from the scrolls of the prophet. Yes. And that's where it's so important. I think, boy, could we go back and start over? <laughs> You know, a lot of people, Christian people, they have children and they don't understand these principles of bringing those children together in a quiet time with Jesus. In his youth, the early morning and evening twilight often found him alone on the mountainside or amongst the trees of the forest, spending a quiet hour in prayer and the study of God's word. During his ministry, his intimate acquaintance with the scripture testifies to his diligence mm. in their study. And since he gained knowledge as we gain it, isn't that an interesting thought? Because he was the one that inspired it and wrote a lot of, had men write a lot of these things um, through mm. the power of the Holy Spirit. He gained knowledge again by having to restudy. So he's given us an example as a human being. His wonderful power, both mental and spiritual, is a testimony yes. to the value of the Bible as a means of education. Yes. So it's a testimony to all of us that the creator and the author, God, come down here and he's relearning, restudying the scriptures which he helped to inspire. Mm -hmm. Amen. <clears throat> One of the things I think about, we, we frequently hear people say, well, how am I going to have time? Mm, yeah. if, if anybody was like me, I want my seven and a half, eight hours sleep. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of people are thinking, how am I going to fit this in? We read through the scriptures and we see where Jesus spent deep into the night healing people, ministering and preaching. Yes. And then he would go up on a hillside and he might not sleep at all that night. And he might just commune and pray and, and contemplate, you know, scriptures, having time with his father, and then come back down the next day with no sleep and go throughout the day normally as, as he would as, as if he had mm -hmm. sleep. And that's one of the things that I think a lot of people, if they will test the Lord, mm -hmm. the scriptures say, test me. Yes. Taste, Taste Amen. See if this isn't good or true. Amen. And um, you know, put a challenge out for, for yourself with your relationship with the Lord and set up a specific time. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. if, if someone's like me, they think more clearly in the mornings. So go to bed as early in, in the evening as you can, but then set your alarm. Start making a habit of getting up a little bit earlier, however much time a person mm -hmm. would want to. Mm -hmm. And... Um, See if the Lord wouldn't, mm -hmm. wouldn't make up that difference. You know, there's a, an accountability mm. for our time. Yeah, oh, it's yeah. not just uh, something that, well, you know, if I spend time with the Lord, good. If I don't, no big deal. But God is going to um, judge us according to how we spend our time. That's right. Oh, yeah. Um, the Spirit of Prophecy says God will bring us into account 
for how we spend our time mm. and that which he has placed in our hands to be stewards over. We're supposed to be stewards over our time. I mean, this is sobering to me. This is something that I need as well uh, because I don't always spend my time right. Uh, sometimes we'll be get right in the middle of the day and we're just like, oh my goodness, did we didn't, we didn't yes. have devotions this morning. We didn't spend time in prayer and the day's falling apart mm -hmm. and, and we're finally, we, we can see that, that uh, we've been a toy of the enemy. Mm -hmm. and, um, oh, wow. But we do have that accountability yes. to the time that God gives us. And that's why it's so important that we recognize these things and we make a decided effort. Mm -hmm. You know, because if you decide, how many of you go oh. day after day without eating? Now, I know Linda does once in a while. But <laughs> <laughs> well. She may drink her juice, but, but really most of the time we are going to be sure that we have some kind of physical food to take. Mm -hmm. And so if we make that commitment, I cannot eat mm -hmm. until I partake of the spiritual because well. it's the spiritual food that's really going to carry us through. There was a man that was shown here on 3ABN and I wish I could remember the full story, but I remember oh. this part of it. And when he had made the decision to have his morning devotions, you know, he never broke it. He, he realized the importance of that, but he also came to a point where he needed a job really, really bad. Oh. And on the day of his interview, he overslept. Mm -hmm. oh. So he was in a quandary, what mm -hmm. do I do? Do I go ahead? And I think, I, if I remember correctly, he didn't have a car. I think he had to like get a bus and da, 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 go to different places to get to, to where the interview was going to be. But he decided, I can't do it. God has to be first. Amen. Okay. And he took his usual time. He didn't try to hurry. Mm -hmm. And I know I've been bad about sometimes, oh, I don't have much time. I'll, I'll just read a little. Or if I'm going to bed and I haven't taken enough time, I'm starting to get real sleepy. I'll just read a passage or two. Because I think it's good to have that evening mm -hmm. time with him too. And uh, he went ahead. He took his time. But on the way there, things began to happen out of the natural order of things, including the man that he was to have the interview with, come to find out mm -hmm. everything worked out for the good because he took that time Amen. and he got the job. I wish I could remember the, the miracles, but I'm just saying God can work anything yes. out. Yes. Amen. Even something Amen. like that. We think we have to yes. be there at nine o'clock, but you don't get up till eight mm -hmm. and we don't have that time. Well, what happens if you go ahead and take that time? When you make that commitment, I mean, I think everybody needs to know that they've never done it. If you made that commitment, be sure that the enemy doesn't like it. Mm -hmm. Be sure he's gonna do his very, best to make sure Absolutely. you don't make that commitment Yes, because he knows you made it to God if you do a certain time. Oh, we're going to do it at six o'clock in the morning. He's going to do his best to make sure it's after six o'clock right. to say to God, See, this commitment, they, they make no commitment. Watch, I can put little things in his way. I remember so many years ago, it went, I call it conversion for me. I belong to the church, raised in the church, uh, never was born again until, you know, I, I, I always said here, I got the, uh, taught the, the, the Sabbath school class. I became a deacon. I became an, an elder, um, taught the young married class. You know, just things like that. And you get a little plaque for right. it and you think, oh, so right. wonderful. Right. I really wasn't converted. Hmm. It was later on the conversion really came. And when conversion really came, came, I felt a real need. That's right. I mean, a need, a desperate need to spend time with Jesus. I, I, I had to get up of a morning. Of course, I had a couple kids at home at, at the time. And so I said to the Lord, you know, I, of course I had to work construction all, you know, had to be at work at eight o'clock or whatever it is. And so I had to get, you know, make sure I was up at five. So I was so at six o'clock, I'll get things settled. Six o'clock I'll study for an hour and then I'll, I'll go to work or whatever. And, you know, so I made that commitment. I went down the basement and, blah, 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 and pretty soon there's a little knock on the door. Hmm. It's a little three-year-old. I'm saying, man, well, you, don't, you don't get up this early. So I thought right then that's, be careful. That was the <laughs> devil. The devil's using, you know, to sidetrack me That's to right. get all aggravated. That's right. And so every morning, here he, six o'clock, here he come. Hmm. I thought, man, this is getting old. I can't take this, you know. So I said, well, I'll just fool the old devil. I'll do it at five. And so at five o'clock, I went down for my worship. At five o'clock, there's the door. There he is again. I thought, man, this is not any good. Mm. I kept saying, you stay in bed. I said, you can stay in bed down and sleep a little bit. So I, he didn't do that. So about, about a week went by. Okay, I changed it to four. I'm saying we have to be willing to change, right. to put ourselves out. Self-denial doesn't make good, bad, or ugly. I just know I needed that time. If I didn't have that time, I wasn't going to make it. 
And so I just, I just sensed that. So I said, I'll try. So I went at four o'clock. Then finally I was going at three o'clock. My worship began at three o'clock in the morning. Mm. And lo and behold, if he didn't get up at three o'clock in the morning too, is there, <laughs> you know, just, and maybe not doing anything, but just going sitting in the corner. But I was distracted. I needed some time. So finally after that, I said, son, don't be coming down no more until three o'clock in the morning. That's right. And so he came down. So I tanned his hide, put him in his bed and that was <laughs> it. So it changed things around a little bit. You know, he has to, he still had to obey, but yeah. I'm saying it wasn't. Yeah. You know, it, Kenny, when you go to the doctor, yeah. one of the first things they ask you is, mm. how's your diet? Uh -oh. are, are you eating regularly? Mm -hmm. And uh -oh. in the beginning, I used to say, why do they always ask me that question? <laughs> and I found out that the sicker you are, mm -hmm. for some reason, the less nutrients your body really wants, especially, and, and, and that's one of the first indicators oh. if you stop eating that you're actually sick mm. and probably getting sicker. And I was thinking of individuals in the nursing home. Oh, yeah. You know, in the nursing home, Sometimes they have to feed you. But if you're a healthy adult and you need somebody, you're not gonna be, if you're a healthy adult, you don't need somebody to feed you. You're willing to feed yourself. Mm -hmm. So your diet shows in many ways how sick you are. Mm -hmm. And if you're not eating every day, maybe you're a little sick and you don't know it. Mm -hmm. and, and we need to clear that up. Mm -hmm. So like you, yeah. I skipped days because I was busy. Mm -hmm. Very, very, very busy yeah, yeah. when I worked in Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. and I neglected. And like Chris said, I started having these strange dreams, these weird dreams. Mm -hmm. Things were just oh, out wow. of line and getting mm -hmm. worse. And I'm like, wow. what's going on? Why is my mind going in these directions? Mm -hmm. All these weird things happening. Mm -hmm. And one day I said, when's the last time you prayed? When's the last time you spent an hour with God? And it was months. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we went to church every week, but that was it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm started praying again wow. and all the dreams. Cause I'm, I, I was Come in the on, military. Huh? I've been yes. diagnosed with certain uh, PTSD and things like mm. that. All the dreams went away. Mm. Amen. And ever since then I said, if I wake up and I'm having a nightmare, I said, did you pray? And the answer was no, Eric, you, you skipped praying before you went to bed. Oh yeah. And then I get on my knees, I pray and I go back Man. to bed. So prayer, time with God is very important or, or else you're going to get sick. You're going to get very sick one way or another. I like, yeah. That reminds me of, of uh, some verses that I uh, wrote down here. Mm -hmm. From 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, it, uh, this is a really nice, nice passage. In verse 23, it says, the very God of peace sanctify you wholly or completely. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we're talking about is character development. Having the Lord be a part of our lives for the purpose of character development. And frequently that is uh, equated with sanctification. So here in verse 23, it talks about the very God of peace sanctifying you wholly or completely. Mm. But when you back up to verse 16, rejoice evermore. Or what are we going to rejoice about? Mm -hmm. Unless we're spending time with the Lord. Mm. Pray without ceasing. Yes. That's right. Why would we want to pray? You know, we can't be on our knees praying constantly, obviously, but we can be in the in the spirit, spirit of prayer, Amen. we can sure. we can always remember. I always have a divine being, in an angel, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit. Right. Someone is always close. If I will just always remember that. Mm -hmm. Verse eighteen: In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in yes. Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit. When we don't spend the time with the Lord, we're quenching the spirit. He's not able to work mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. work mm -hmm. with us as uh, as as the Lord would like to. Mm -hmm. Despise not prophesying, prove all things, hold yeah. fast that which is good. good, abstain from all appearance of evil. So if we have these relationship experiences with the Lord, the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it and to kind of summarize, faithful is the Lord who calls you, yes. preserves you blameless, and sanctifies you completely unto the Amen. coming of, a Lord, of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Because this life is all about preparing to live in heaven. Mm -hmm. That's right. Don't we all want to live with Jesus eternally? Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. are, are we just going to go through life, you know, having a, a relationship with the Lord upon occasion? Mm. Or do we want... When we get to heaven, do we want Jesus to be 
my best friend, mm -hmm. not yours. Jesus is going to be my best friend. Yeah. <laughs> so if, if I'm not spending time with him now, yeah. right. you know, that's we, right. We it can't. won't happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we won't be wow. there. We, that's we, how important this study is. We yeah. won't be there. Right. We're not going to have what it takes in order for us to be sanctified, in order to be raised up when Christ comes. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, a and if you haven't read this book, Desire of Ages, I encourage you to read it. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's been yeah. years that I just read parts of it, but I'm going through just chapter after chapter. And, oh, it is so wonderful. This one, Desire of Ages, page 83, it reads, In our association with one another, we should take heed mm -hmm. lest we forget Jesus. Uh -oh. And that's what you're yeah. talking about. That's what you're talking about, Brother um, Eric. And pass along unmindful that he is not with us. We may claim to be a Christian. Mm. We may be going through some of the motions, but what's really up here? Mm -hmm. What's really on here? What's yes. really, what are we really looking at? Amen. When we become absorbed in worldly things so that we have no thought for him in whom our hope and eternal life is centered. That's a key point. It should be centered. We separate ourselves. It's not Jesus leaving Mercy. us. Mm -hmm. It's not the Holy Spirit leaving us. Mm -hmm. We are separating ourselves from Jesus and from the heavenly angels. How many of you want to live on this earth without your oh, heavenly no. angel? No. No. Without Christ, no. not me. No. These holy beings cannot remain where the Savior's presence is not desired. Right. Think about that. And in his absence is not marked. Oh, and his absence is not marked. This is why, now listen to this, oh. this is why discouragement so often exists among the professed followers of Christ. Oh. So we do get discouraged. And there was a lady that's very dear to us, part of our church family for years, part of your blood relative. I won't say the name, but she's been extremely ill. And just a few, maybe two weeks ago, oh, wow. um, we talked to her on the phone. Her husband had been in. He had been reading Steps to Christ. She was feeling so blessed. But now she's really sick. And I don't think that she's hearing that. He's not with her. And there's nothing that has been coming in day after day after day, except these medicines and things like that. And he, she talked to Kenny the other day. And she says, Kenny, you don't understand. My, my cup is only half full. In other words, she wasn't filled up with the Holy Spirit. It wasn't overflowing. She didn't have peace. And he's telling me that she kept, he kept trying to encourage her and she kept going back to that. And as he's telling me these things, my eyes, I just filled up with tears mm -hmm. because it's very possible she's going to die. Do we want to die without having that peace, mm -hmm. without having that relationship with Jesus? And I encouraged him. I said, tell him, tell him if nothing else, play some music, play 3ABN Music Channel. Mm -hmm. You know, play th something. Let her hear the word of God being spoken in her room. So when we can't help ourselves when we're sick, mm -hmm. you know, we need to at least ask somebody, help me. Mm -hmm. I need that connection. We need to be connected to the source of life. I have a relative died a long time ago and the nurse came to us and said, he died without closure. No. Uh -oh. And she'd seen a lot of people pass away. That was her job. I had to, I was away in the military when he actually died. Mm -hmm. But the nurse told my other relative that I've seen a lot of people pass away and this individual died without closure. Mm. And ever since then, I always said to myself, there are two things when you die that's the most important thing to you. That's God, mm. what's next, and family. Mm. And those through our lives should be the main priority. Mm. But we end up getting pulled in all these directions and mm. forget what the priorities are. Well, and I, I don't want to die like this relative amen. died, amen. You know, where the nurse is above me and said, you just passed away without any closure. That, that's well, a horrible thing. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that when Jesus was on this earth, one of the things he was sure to do is to make sure the person knew that their sins were forgiven. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that that would be one of my priorities is to make sure my sins were forgiven and that I had uh, secured my place in, in the sanctuary in heaven. Mm -hmm. And um, 
Amen. Um, one quote I have here, for if the mind is filled with other things, present truth is shut out and there is no place in our foreheads for the seal of the living God. Mm. Oh, look and so that, huh? the enemy wants our foreheads. Yes. He wants our frontal that's lobe. Right. That's right. And so we can't give it to him. We have to protect that because that's, that's the treasured thing here Amen. is our allegiance. That's where our allegiance, our, our conscience lies. So we have to protect that frontal lobe, mm -hmm. but we cannot... Yes. There is no place for present truth if we don't give God the time that he needs to change That's us. Right. That is, yeah. that just hits it mm. right on the head because this is a spiritual warfare. Why do you think the enemy has yeah. invented so many things to keep us distracted? Yeah. We have all these time-saving pieces of equipment, computers, da-da-da-da. Yeah. Supposedly. Supposedly. <laughs> yeah. But then it takes our mind. And in fact, they've done studies mm -hmm. that children who spend time in front of one of these before the age of three, that their minds are actually rewired. Right. You know, I remember years ago, one of the ladies in our church said, what is the deal with these children? They're not the same anymore. <laughs> yeah. It's because yeah. their brains have been rewired and yeah. he, he hasn't changed his tactics. Yeah. He huh. wants us to serve him. That's right. And by not serving God, by not being filled yeah. with the truth, we will ultimately mm -hmm. serve him. That's right. Yeah, I'm wondering what this yeah. one that says, one, day, one day's neglect. And we've talked about coming back and blah, blah. But it, I wonder if today, if there's people, if they miss one day, they may never come back to it. It's kind of like maybe, and hopefully I can use this, all right, person that we might be able to take a drink of something that we shouldn't, and that's it. No more. Right. Some yeah. people take a drink of something they shouldn't, and they're hooked. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if, if, sure. if it's possible. This is the importance of this life and death, this is yes. eternal life that we can't, we, we, we just can't let it go because we may be one of those. If we let it go one day, we can let it go two and three and four and pretty soon. <laughs> so, we so we never come back anymore. We one, feel. Right. So one decision and one act can actually set you down a pathway. Good. Well, I believe so. Right. I, I believe so. Didn't, didn't Jesus say, while you have the light, walk yes. in the light, walk in the light the while you have it Very because good, he Eric. knew that that light's not going to be around forever. Oh. That's right. right. And I know a lot of people who you saw the light bulb go off, but they didn't follow through. Oh. Mm -hmm. And then they got distracted and they never came back. Mm -hmm. And that's a place where we, we really don't want to be. Because heaven has recorded the sincerity and the honesty of the commitment that we've made with the Lord. And if we don't follow through with that, that might be something, if, if we miss a day, if we've had uh, a commitment to the Lord and, and we miss that one day, that might be something that we need to really seriously really? confess and repent for. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. To, Amen. you know, Lord, I'm sorry, I, I made this commitment mm -hmm. for, with you to have this type of relationship with you and I dropped the ball. Please forgive me. Yeah, because he, he showed up, right? At the time that you commit that you want to do it, exactly. uh, the Holy Spirit showed up there, right? In your, and then we just went on with something else and how sad if we really realize that's a reality. Mm -hmm. you know, the same. Did, you, did you hear about them when they talked about you put a frog in a pot and you turn up the water slowly mm, and yeah. the, the frog will never jump out, it'll boil itself? Yeah. Satan, sometimes he works slowly. Mm, yeah. right. You miss a day, not a big deal. That's right. And then you go a week where you keep, and then you miss another day. Oh. And then you're missing two days and you slowly drift away over time, never realizing that you're drifting until yeah. you're in a lot of trouble. And in my case, like I said, I was having really bad dreams. Oh, wow. And then God said, did mm -hmm. you pray? Mm -hmm. And no. And I started praying again and, and gone. Mm -hmm. So it's easy to drift away. And hopefully we have family members and friends yes. or God to pull us back and say, are you praying, Eric? Mm -hmm. yeah. And I want to make a comment a while ago. You said, I don't want to die mm -hmm. without things being settled. That's settled right. with our Heavenly Father. That's right. But I hope and I pray that this program here mm. this evening as we're, we're going into the Sabbath hours will help us all to say, I don't want to live mm -hmm. a moment, a day without Christ in my heart. That's right. I want to share this because mm. you mentioned earlier about, you know, uh, what do we really love? <laughs> and this kind of fits that. That's been quite a while back, but you were talking about your phone and different things. Right. As we associate together, we may be a blessing to one another if we are Christ, oh. our sweetest thoughts will be of him. True, yes. We shall love to talk to him. And we, and as we speak to one another of his love, our hearts will be softened wow. by the divine influences, beholding the beauty of his character. Mm 
we shall be changed into the same image from glory to glory. That's why this is such a spiritual warfare, because as we spend time with our Heavenly Father, we become part of Him. He becomes part of us. We're merged, we're, we're connected, we're part of that vine. Yeah, the so vital steps of Christ, page 100, just a line here, it says, the heart, you've been talking about, the heart must be open to the Spirit's influence or God's blessing cannot be received. Mm. We Amen. want the blessings of That's God. Right. I need the blessings of God. That's right. We sing a song you know, every, every Sabbath, that blessings are refreshing <laughs> along this pilgrim way. You know, blessings are refreshing because God sends those blessings. He wants us to be blessed. And sometimes we wake up on Sabbath morning, we wonder whether we want to get up or not, and we want to go into His presence. Mm -hmm. Something is wrong with that kind of a thought pattern, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. That should be the joy of, of the week, that's the right. Sabbath, to be able to go to meet with it. If you really believe He's showing up, that's right. if you believe the Spirit of really God is there and the Spirit's going to help us, I need help and encouragement and the, and the congregation needs help. Everyone of us need to gather together. We'll want to get there. Mm -hmm. Not as late as we can, but maybe as early as we there can. You go. Know, and get there, there you go. There you go. And spend that's some right. time. Not talking about business, not talking about the things of the earth, but spend some time. If you get there early, go in the sanctuary, kneel down, have prayer. My lands, you know, pray for the power of the Holy Spirit, you know, to come upon us. That would be the best Sabbath that maybe we've, we've ever had. I think even the Bible says that. It says, as yes. time gets short and you see trouble coming, see? forsake not gathering together. Amen. That's right. That's right. I think time is short. Mm -hmm. I, I see a lot short. of things going on, and mm -hmm. this is the wrong time to not be, you know, spending mm -hmm. time with mm -hmm. the Lord. Yeah. I, Eric was talking just a while ago about the frog in the skillet um, or <laughs> in the pot, whatever. And it reminded me of this. I just looked it up uh, this, by the spirit of prophecy. Mm -hmm. His step is noiseless. His, movement, his movements are stealthy. Mm. His batteries are masked. He has so concealed himself from view that many can hardly believe that he exists. Oh. Much less can they be convinced of his amazing malignity, activity, and power. Yeah. If he were to show himself openly in his true character, he would arouse the Christian's dormant energies and mm. send him to God in prayer. Wow. Mm. She's mm. speaking of the, that's the way the devil works. Mm. Yeah, I'm talking about the enemy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. he, he tries to just fly below the radar so oh, that we don't wow. detect his presence in our mm -hmm. life and how he's affecting us. Because if we do, it might arouse us to go to God. And that's, uh, that's one yes. reason we need all, you know, 2 Timothy 3.16 says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. If we're not putting these scriptures into our mind and heart, and Mrs. White also talks about that we need to be memorizing, memorizing, and in my I want to say my old age, at <laughs> my old oh. age, it's harder to memorize. Mm -hmm. But I've got, I've got in my phone, I've got a note here, memorize. Mm. And so I go through those scriptures and try to memorize, mm -hmm. try to memorize and, and keep them fresh. I've got others that are promises, you know, go through and try yeah. to keep those fresh in my mind. But that's what the enemy is doing. He is stealthily orchestrating events throughout this world, throughout our churches, in our homes to keep us so preoccupied that the scripture is not coming in, it's not doing its work, and we're going to be separated from Christ. So we have to make a decided effort. He says, I, I promise you, I'll never leave you, I'll never mm, forsake you, but he's not going to force you. Mm. The enemy will come course. In fact, we know one of his greatest deceptions that's not here yet, but it's coming will be a, a deception of coercion. That's right. The Bible tells us that, the, you know, that we're going to, the only thing that we have left, the only thing that we have left, there's a, 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 a story that Mrs. White writes about the cord, who's holding the cord. Oh, and at the end of this trail, you know, everybody starts out with their wagons, their cars, as it were, everything's full, and the path continues to get narrower and narrower as mm -hmm. they, they get closer That's to right. heaven. And as they have to throw things over, well, at the end, I mean, they don't even have socks, and their feet are bleeding, and all they have mm -hmm. left, the, the path is gonna go from underneath their feet, and it's they hear the voice to hold the cord, hold the cord, but they're thinking, who's holding the cord? Yeah. But they hold the cord in faith That's right. and in belief. That's right. Right. And once they do that, then Christ is able to carry them across to the other side. If we don't hold the cord, yeah. if we don't study, if we're not putting these things into our hearts and our mind, we're not going to have that ability for him to come and help us as he wants to. Yeah. 
And if we want his help, then we need to say, Lord, I am sorry. I've messed up. I didn't understand this, but I'm going to make a new commitment with you tonight, tomorrow, the next day, from every day the rest of our lives. The Bible says that the deception will be so powerful yes. that if it were possible, it, will deceive. It, they would, it, would deceive the, it would deceive the very mm. elect. Amen. It doesn't say it will deceive, so we want to be the elect. Yes. And as the pressure increases, we want to stay in the Word daily to give us the strength to resist that battle that we all have between the spirit and the flesh. It's going to go, the strength is going to go to the one that we feed the most, and we want to feed there you go. the spirit there you go. Daily, yeah. and very, not good. The very good. Very good, Eric. Very good. Okay, praise it. We got what a minute and a half or so left, but that thought, maybe a little thought that we have, what each one will share around the table, just a quick one. Well, my thought is, um, like we've been speaking about, that small voice. If you mm -hmm. hear that small voice talking to you, saying, "Are you spending time with me? Are you occupied with something else?" That's telling you, you know, pick up your Bible, read the Word, pray, and do something different other than what you're doing with Amen. Christ, in Christ. Amen. Yes. Good thought. Um, I like the prayer of Christ from John chapter 17, mm -hmm. and I would just encourage everyone, put yourself into that prayer, especially the part here beginning verse 16. They are not of the world, so don't be of the world, even as Christ is not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth, as thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the yes. world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Amen. And by beholding, we yes. become changed. Second Corinthians 3.18. We can't do it on our own. We have no, to have the Lord. We can't. There's just a little line at the top of the uh, bottom of the first question. It says this, in our association, please remember this, in our association with one another, we should take heed lest we forget Jesus. So we want to encourage you. Don't forget Jesus. Stay in the words. Keep praying. Jesus is coming. God bless you. We'll see you next Amen. time.